Hello friends, welcome to Helping Testers. So this is the 14th and the last topic that is some interview questions we'll be covering in this uh, session. So the, for the first basic question, what is performance testing? So the performance testing is uh, checking that how a website will behave when the number of users increases. A website is behaving fine when the load is of one or two users but as the load increases how our website will behave will the response time would increase will the website will start crashing there can be a number of scenarios so how our website would behave so that we can rectify that issue what is difference between load stress and volume testing so load testing so suppose there is a website and we know that this testing can handle let's say thousand users so testing with thousand users on that website is known as load testing stress testing for the same test website we know that it can handle thousand users so when we are testing with the load greater than thousand is known as stress testing right we are applying the load greater than the expectations volume testing this type of testing is done with large amount of data when the when we enter a huge amount of data to a website or the server and then we are performing the testing is known as volume testing jmeter tool yes as we all know jmeter is a performance testing tool and it is 100% that is purely on java what is a test plan so whenever we start the jmeter first time so it opens two things test plan and the workbench so test plan for each test so that is for each jmx file we have we can have only in a one script we can have only at max one test plan so you can say it is the overall container which contains all the components of the jmeter next question can be what is a thread group so as we know what is the real advantage or real use of jmeter is that it can generate a huge load huge load means it can create virtual users and which by which we can hit our website or put load to our website so how we can generate those users is through thread groups so through thread group we can generate a number of threads that is virtual users we can in, uh, also tell in how much time do we want these users to be on the website that is the ramp up period loop count and other things can be decided by thread group so in one jmeter that is in one test pen there can be n number of thread groups we can say one thread group is equals to or we can say a thread group normally we say in jmeter as a test scenario what is a ramp up period suppose you are applying a load of 100 users to a website you don't want that all those 100 users should hit the website at the same time because that is not a real life scenario maybe the 100 users are hitting the website in 10 minutes or 1 hour so that is the real traffic so what you do you specify a ramp period suppose let's say i want 100 users to be ramp up in 10 seconds so what it means 100 divided by 10 that is uh, sorry sorry guys that is 10 divided by 100 so it means 0 0.01 second okay so in 0 0.1 second one user will be landed on the website so this is how we calculate a ramp up period that is it will take 10 seconds for 100 users to be on the website what is the purpose of adding a thread group so that is we discuss that it produces a real time scenario we can use ramp up period we can use looping so it's about simulating the users in a real time what are samplers so sam by samplers you can interact with your servers you can 
interact with your website you can interact with your database so jmeter so how why we are using jmeter jmeter we want to test the load on the website how we are generating load yes we are generating the load with jmeter using the thread group but now we have to tell those users that you need to go to that website so how we can tell that we can use samplers for that if it's a simple website we can use http request if we want to access the database we can use jdbc so similarly based on the action that needs to be tested such as file transfer sending the api request to the api sending java request hitting query on the database and another things what is a controller now as we know that there are th different scenarios controllers is used for generating real life scenarios like suppose uh, we have considered one example before that if we log into a facebook let's say thousand users log into facebook then we expect that all those thousand users would be visiting their timelines but we won't be expecting that all those thousand users would be changing their password no out of thousand maybe one only would be changing the password in a day okay so we can make some exceptions we can change the flow of control for example we can use if else for loop so these type of statements and we can control the flow of execution that is how many users should go if this condition satisfied then only though for example if the user receives to a message for update password through facebook then he will be changing the password so these type of scenarios if else scenarios can be handled by controllers what are different type of controllers some important controllers simple controller so it's it's just acts a container it does not do anything on its own once only controller so anything which is in under once only container will be executed once only irrespective if it's in a loop also it will only execute once if controllers self and explain free if the condition is true only then the scenario under this if controller would be executed in case of false it won't be loop controller suppose we want to perform an activity n number of times let's say 10 times 20 times so we can specify the value of n and we can loop it interleaf controller that is works on a sequential way For, suppose there are four request so in first case it will execute first in second second loop it will execute second request in third loop it will execute third request so one at a time random on the controller so the number of request under the random controller any request can be executed once you cannot control so this is random controller now what are listeners listeners so listeners listens all the activity of the jmeter and they perform the reports so that's why we known as listeners what are different types of listeners important ones view result tree view result in table uh, simple data writer aggregate graph is there any way to open jmeter other than ui so that's the question sorry it was mentioned here yes uh there can be jmeter can be open in a non gui mode so for this the command is here it is always recommended to open the jmeter in non ui mode when you are running your test scenarios that is when you are applying a load to a website so the command for it is jmeter then dash n that n specifies a non gui mode then dash t it specifies the test scripts and the path of a gmx file we know that the test plan in a jmeter is saved with the extension of .jmx so first we have to go to the location where jmeter is then specify dash n which states a non gui mode then dash t which states that the it, in the next statement would be the path of the script and then the gmx file what is performance purpose of timer so timers are used to generate real time scenarios uh, suppose 1000 users visited a website so there would be a time gap maybe the first user let's say 1000 user landed on the facebook 
Now the second activity they are performing is scrolling uh, or let's say another API hit. So on, all won't be doing in the same time. Some would take two seconds, some would take five seconds, some would take 10 seconds. So these type of delay can be added with the help of timers. Regular expressions. So there comes scenarios when you want to fetch details from one response for the another or what you can do you want to compare some values from the response you want to apply the assertions so how you can achieve this if it's simple let's say uh, simply you can do with the compare statements it's okay but in case of complex scenarios for example uh, in a response there is coming web of let's say 10 times now you need to check how many times the web is coming or you uh, you want to pass a test case even you find any web of in the whole response so all these type of scenarios can be handled by regular expressions so what are the benefits of jmeter over another tools like loader or other the first one is that it is open source and we don't need to pay for its license it is platform independent you can work on mac linux all the requirement is just that you should have the java installed on your machine supports multi-threading so it just means that with the help of thread groups we can create virtual users now what are virtual users they are created with the help of multi-threading only no programming skills are needed yes if you are working with jmeter you know programming skill is working you can start your performance testing though if you want to generate some complex scenarios and others you have slightly knowledge of programming language is needed good reporting jmeter has a number of reports available you can also integrate with the and to generate the customized report also you can add various plugins to generate more or different type of reports important question what is a preprocessor so if you want any activity to be done before any request is known as preprocessor for example if you are landing to the home page and you want to a login or you want to clear some database these type of stuffs can be handled before the request by preprocessors similarly the post processor any activity you want to do after the request is completed is known as post processor what is distributed testing yeah so jmeter consumes a lot of memory so when we are working with one two users it is perfectly fine but as the number of users increases let's say 100 or 200 so jmeter is using the memory of your server or your local machine to generate the users so when you generate a load of 500 600 or 1000 users you will see a normal pc would crash the reason is that it consumes so much amount large amount of memory normally 30 300 or 400 amount of virtual users from one desktop machine is sufficient we should not apply much load from a single machine so what we can do we can run the jmeter on let's say different many machines and we can apply a 300 load from all the machines so this is how we can apply 300 300 300 from three machines and we can generate a load of 900 users so this is known as distributed testing using jmeter so it is very easy not much activities needs to be done so how we can parameterize data so for that uh, we do have a config element under config element, we have user defined variables so in that you can define your variables also you can decide define the variables at test plan level also you the global variables can be defined there also so these were some basic questions you should know when you're going for the interview some would definitely be asked like what is performant or the component definitions what they do so just go through that you should be aware for this and all the best for your interviews from helping testers team team thank you thanks for watching our tutorial series so if you want to learn more about the jmeters you can enroll uh, enroll for a paid course and uh, it covers each and every topics distributed and generating reports more than 10 plus hours of videos which is available 
so please enroll or write in the in the comments if you have any issues thank you